Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals. And on today's video, we're going to be working on reprocessing some copper mat, trying to reduce it down to pure base metal metallic form, then work on recovering our precious metals from our metallic button. All right, so our goal today is to take our copper mat, primarily copper mat, and process it down and recover the copper and the other base metals, uh, remove it from the sulfur and the iron sulfide that's, that's in there as well. And so we just have our metallic fraction that we're working with. Here's our mat, and it's just that stuff we used from our first video. And so I've got my recipe kind of perfected now. I use one part silica sand, two parts mat, two parts uh, borax, and then four parts lye. And I add a couple uh, iron rods in there to reduce the copper and the other base metals. And that ends up giving us uh, our two-phase um, smelt that we want, just the slag on top our copper uh, bead on the bottom, or our base metal bead in the bottom. So um, let me mix up a batch here. I'm going to be using a number 10 crucible. It's in the furnace there, uh, warming up a little bit. So uh, I'll mix up a batch here, and we'll check it out once I get it in the crucible. All right, here's our number 10 crucible. And I'm just going to pour our material in there. It came out to be 300 grams of mat, 300 grams of borax, 600 grams of lye, and 150 grams of sand. And now I'll add a couple chunks of iron in there to reduce the sulfides to base metals, and we'll get it fired up. All right, guys, let's see what we got here. Here's our pour. Oh, here's our metal button. All right, I just put it back up there just to kind of show you how it would look if it was complete. But there's that, there's the button, mostly copper. And then there's the spot where it was. It doesn't look like there's any mat or anything there. Let me uh, see I do this at the same time. Well, let me break it open and see if, uh, see if there's any mat under there. Well, it's a little bit hard to see, but there's the flat side where the button was. And then it's just slag right up to that flat surface. So we got rid of all our mat and recovered our metal. All right, we'll get our metal weighed here. Here's our button. Weighs 46 and a half grams. And we put 300 grams of mat in. So that stuff's about, uh, what is that? About 15, 18% uh, metal by weight. So that's a pretty good recovery. Here's some of our little copper buttons that we've smelted down. Um, and I ran, I don't know, a couple hours today and smelted four or five batches of these things. And uh, you can see I've, 
um, collected the copper down. I've got a bunch of little ones too. And now our goal, we're going to take these along with um, just the whole batch of other stuff that I've been working with and trying to experiment with to get the, the recipe right. Um, but we're going to take all this copper now, we're going to melt it down, and we're going to cast it into a little bar that we're going to try and electro in the copper away. All right, we got all our copper down in that number four crucible. We're going to melt it down and cast it. Actually, I'm going to use this, this little red, uh, I think it's a electrical cover for an old electric motor. Um, but cast it into that shape. Hopefully it'll get a kind of a square flat plate that we can uh, then electro in the copper away. Um, but uh, I'm not going to add any flux to this. There's a little bit of flux and stuff left over. If I have to add a little bit, I might add just a little bit of borax to help clean that up some. Um, but let's get this fired up and melt the copper down and cast our anode. All right, guys. Well, I'm actually almost too embarrassed to show you this, um, but this is our little electro winning cell. Uh, this is uh, called a rectifier, and it uh, runs DC current um, from the the positive and the negative here. And over here is our is our little electro uh, refining cell. Here's our uh, copper bar we poured. This is a cutoff five gallon bucket. And all around the outside, I've just hung uh, pieces of copper sheet. And um, I've connected the anode to the positive and the cathode here to the negative, um, which is the, the copper sheet to all the cathode here. And uh, I just flipped the switch. And it runs the DC volts and the amps. Uh, show how much, um, essentially how fast it's, it's electro winning away. And uh, it's going to drop here probably to about 12 or so. And then you have a, a dial that you can increase or decrease the power. And our goal here is not necessarily to get a really nice copper uh, plate on our, on our cathode here. It's just to get the copper off the bar. We don't, we don't care if it's all bubbly or blistery or, or dendritic. Um, we just want the copper out of our bar. And uh, anything that's not copper, like uh, lead or silver or gold, falls down uh, to the bottom of our cell here as anode slimes. And once this bar is completely, uh, essentially, electro wind itself away, uh, you'll have pretty much pure copper on our uh, cathode. And uh, all the precious metals and other stuff will be down at the bottom here that we can then filter and smelt again and recover our precious metals. And here's our bar. Um, it's, I just started the process, so it's going to take a while, but um, those, that little bit of kind of gray, blacky sludge stuff on the surface of the anode is those anode slimes. Um, and then the, the, there you go, when it's back in there, it starts foaming again. Uh, let, me, let me turn it off here. Um, but the, the uh, electrolyte here is uh, water, sulfuric acid, and copper sulfate. And I actually, before I, I had run this test, I, it had sat here for a long time, and so that's why it's all blue around the edge is the copper sulfate. Um, the, the water and stuff that evaporated and the copper sulfate is kind of crystallized all around the, the copper here. Um, but uh, as long as the, the bar is in the, the electrolyte, um, the, the process uh, uh, kind of goes and, and works its way through. And um, the copper ions uh, get pulled off the bar by the electricity. The, the electrolyte is full of copper ions. And so for every uh, copper ion that gets pulled off the bar, one plates onto the copper here. And so you're just constantly flowing copper from the anode to the cathode. 
All right, we've been going on and off for, I don't know, about a week. Um, and we can take a look here. Our bar is getting pretty well eaten on the bottom. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flip it around. And so I'm going to uh, attach the wire to the, to the bottom uh, in this view and turn it so this, this thick part that hasn't been in the, the plating solution is down in there. And we'll start plating this, this top half. Um, but you can see it's, it's really thin down there. All right, guys, we've been going about, uh, I don't know, three or four weeks now, kind of on and off and um, getting this thing plated out. And this is all I've got left of our original bar. And uh, you can see here the the copper sulfate level has gone down quite a bit, but um, there's a bunch of uh, kind of copper deposition there on those plates. And uh, in our in our solution there down at the bottom is kind of where all our slimes are. So I'm going to pull out these copper plates. We'll take a look, and uh, and then I got to filter out all the slimes out of this uh, solution. And then we can smelt them down and hopefully recover our gold and silver. All right, I pulled our copper sheets out, and I just wanted to show you the, the copper deposition on these. And it kind of turned black. I probably had the voltage turned up too high, and we got some of that burning or charring. Um, but it, again, we weren't going for uh, the best plating surface we could. We just wanted to shed the copper as fast as possible. And so that's why it looks kind of all mossy and but it's all pretty hard and it's it's actually really pretty heavy. So um, that did its job there. And then over here, I've got, uh, this is just a five gallon bucket. I've got some of those blue shop rags and then uh, just a screen here to let the liquid go through. So I'm gonna pour it on there slowly and let the liquid go through and hopefully all of our uh, slimes will be left here in our filter paper and we can smelt those down. All right, in the bottom of that tub, there was actually a bunch of little copper that had flaked off the uh, cathode, I believe it is. Um, and so I just put a 20 mesh screen and I poured some water through it and cleaned it out. But you can see the, it's just little flakes of copper and I've washed as much slime through the screen as I can. Um, so we'll let it, we'll let the slimes filter out. I've got the copper out that we don't want to uh, smelt again. And once those uh, those slimes filter through, we'll get that filter paper out and, and see what we, we can recover out of that stuff.
And so there you go. There's our little bead, 1.6 grams. Um, I did 200 grams worth of material and I still have about a kilogram left. So, um, we ended up with about seven and a half grams worth of, uh, precious metals. And judging by the color of this thing, it's probably somewhere in the 50% gold, 50% silver range. Um, so anyway, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about a video like this about, uh, refining gold and silver with, uh, electro winning copper. So I wanted to show it off. Um, again, my, my setup was, was pretty ragtag there, but, um, we ended up with some precious metals. So I'm going to work through, uh, in my spare time and, and work through the rest of that, uh, copper, um, slimes, those slimes we got in the tub and clean up and get some more of this, uh, precious metals. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.